I'd just like to uh, acknowledge the support and response I got for my comeback video last week. Thanks. In this video I'm going to show the success I've had with steaming Russell. Now it's not been easy. Coal-fired locomotives can be very finicky and with Russell it took me quite a time to just get the fire to light and make steam. But with the help of a friend and a few modifications which I'll show you later on in the video I managed to get Russell to run very well and make lots of steam. Fill up with charcoal, soaked in paraffin. Just make sure the grate's in good shape. Sometimes the grate rides up in the firebox during transportation. It's down as far as it'll go. And I put in a little bed of charcoal. That wire hanging down from the cab roof is for the radio controlled receiver. I get as much charcoal in as I can. That bit won't go in without a bit of persuasion. There it goes. Okay, time to light it. Got the blower going. There we go. Sorry it's so loud. cold to the hot charcoal. The coal lights up and steam is raised in no time. I love showing off Russell's valve gear because it looks so good. We're off. I'm turning down the steam blower. A nice healthy glow from the fire seen in the ash pan. seeing the train speeding along and hurtling down the track. Five or six circuits and it's time to feed the fire with new coal. 
I have to resist poking around in the fire too much and disturbing it. The steam sound is the blower. It's not easy holding the camera as well as firing the engine. I have to be careful not to leave the firebox door open too long as the cold air will kill the fire in this small firebox. Leveling the new fire and because the engine has been stood for a while blowing off I've got to get the pump plugged in and some water into the boiler. The water levels down to the bottom nut of the gauge glass. Pumping brings the water level up quite quickly, but I have to be careful again not to reduce the pressure too much. If I do, the blower will lose its effectiveness and the fire will go out. Starting off again, the axle pump is well capable of keeping the water level up in the boiler. Let's have a look at Russell's firebox now, see what's left there after about 45 minutes of steaming. The engine's cooled down and uh, we can take a look inside see what there's, what's left of the fire. It's not too dirty at all, it's, the coal's burnt down well, just a little bit in the bottom on the grate. Have a little poke around here. No, it's not too bad at all. Quite pleased with the way the coal's burnt. I could have run it for a bit longer. There's no clinker. There's no um, clogging of the grate. I'll now swing the loco around and we'll take a look in the smoke box. See how much is left in there. Let's open up this. Have a look. Have a look. See how many, how much char is in there. The smoke box door is a tight fit, and a bit of a struggle to get it open. There we go. Take out the bar. Yeah, it's quite full. Actually. There seems to be as much char in the smoke box as ash on the grate. It's not covered the bottom tubes, which is a good thing. It just goes to show you the force of draft on the fire, created by the steam blower and the exhaust nozzle, to bring that much char through the tubes while running. But the coal seems to need a high draft to stay burning hot enough. Let's vacuum that out. Give it a clean up. an interesting bit and that's um, dropping the back wheels off and getting the uh, ash pan out. Pull the engine to the edge of the bench without it rolling away. I don't advise you doing this with your engine it might fall off the bench. And then I pull the uh, this uh, you see this there's a spring clip holding the back bogey on Got to pull that out like that. Bogey drops out. The grate comes forward. The sorry, the ash pan comes forward, backwards, I should say, forward, backwards. Uh, 
and then the grate. And there it is. All the firebox exposed. And you can see the grate. Yeah. Here's the grate. Originally I had um, holes, but I ground the holes off and made it into bars because I was finding that the grate was choking up. You can see the remains of the holes there, along where the bars have been ground out. The grate works a lot better that way because as you, as you rake it, the ash will fall through into the ash pan. The ash pan, you know, you'll see in the original videos, it's been modified, the sides have been taken off it so I can rake it out from the sides when the fire's in. Makes that a lot easier. Just rest on those four lugs and I can rake the sides out while the engine's in steam through the rake out holes, which were the original rake out holes on the original engine, which are just here. What I'm going to do now is just brush the tubes out and for that I use this um, it's a uh, gun cleaning um, uh, wire brush it's fossil bronze wire brush on an extension piece. I use it for my 5 inch gauge engine as well as uh, the smaller one. I uh, just carefully, without nudging the other parts of the inner firebox. I mean inner smoke box, not firebox. The tube's a quick scrub. It's always good to clean the tubes out, certainly every other run, so that they don't get too furred up with soot. And then, got five tubes, and the one in the middle is too high for the petticoat pipe so I approach it from this end give it a clean out you can see it out the top there one in the middle trying not to poke it too far through so it bangs into the petticoat pipe don't want that to happen that's because it might push it out of alignment there you go Okay, those are the five tubes clean. A quick vac to clean up any soot. getting close to being cleaned up. Lastly, dump the water out of the tanks and the boiler. Getting to the water out of the boiler now. It's best on a handmade model like this is to give it a good old clean and inspection after a run. Just make sure that um, all the bits are still in, in the places that they're supposed to be, all the nuts are still tight. There's no too much, too much grit got into the running gear. Everything's running smoothly. Everything's getting the oil it needs. I give it a quick clean, clean down with paper tissues. Now I just fit the back sheet to the cab, which I have to take off because it's Cold firing to get it into the back of the cab. Put these sheets back in. Quite quick and straightforward. Put the aerial through the chimney to the uh, window, and there we have it. The engine 
is complete. Ready for another run. It's not a shelf queen. This is a hard working, fast running steam engine. And we're getting very close to getting it perfect for steaming. With the right exhaust system, etc. The fire burns properly. So I've been messing with the exhaust drafting on Russell to sort of give it a more of a punch and uh, to draw the fire a little bit more rather than just keep the blower jet on all the time. So I have these little uh, exhaust jets here. As you can see, this is one I've just taken off. And let's have a look in the smoke box and uh, I'll show you what I mean. Get the smoke box door open, get the bar out of the way. And you might be able to see just in here you can see that's the exhaust jet there. That's the blower jet by the side of it. That's the exhaust jet. That's the interchangeable bit. It's just a screw in and I can change the size of the hole here, which allows more steam through or a faster or a slower jet up through the chimney. And that affects the, the, the pull on those tubes in the background there. And hence the force of air through the fire. So I've just changed the one out that we were just looking at this one here. I'll just change that out. Very easy to make on the lathe. I've got a piece of one here somewhere. I can also make the nozzles longer or shorter as needs be. It's just a piece of 6BA hex bar with a screw thread on the end, a hole in the back there and then finished off at this end with a um, suitable hole of different sizes so I can experiment with the drafting on Russell. So that's it. Now here's an interesting discovery. Back at the raised track I found the space between the 5 inch gauge rail and the 3.5 inch gauge rail to be just over one and a quarter inches or 32 millimeter gauge. So could I run my 16 millimeters to the foot scale steam engines on it? Let's try it out. Russell went all the way round. Okay, so could Russell pull me round the track with my 5 inch gauge driving trolley? I'd need to modify the drawbar hook on the trolley and probably strengthen the hook on the engine. But that experiment is for a future video. So stay tuned by subscribing and ringing the bell. And I'll see you here again soon. <laughs>